Well, it looks like summer is officially upon us, my friends. And if you're like me, this whole June, July, early July time frame, weather-wise anyway, I can do without it. Oh yeah, I mean like right now, 95% humidity, 90 degree heat, thunderstorm on the way, it's already sprinkling, and I've been swatting black flies and mosquitoes up the wazoo the whole time. It's like I'm back in the tropics or something. And this is Maine for crying out loud, so it's a weird picture in it. But anyways, thank you for joining me today. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. We have a couple of news or a couple of things I want to talk about. Google, for example, uh, showed up in the headlines in a couple of big ways, one for the better and I think one for the worse. The first one is on June 17th, they're going to be launching their brand new uh, Pixel Buds A series, their third generation true wireless earbuds, or technically the second generation because the first gen, uh, first one was wired. As you can see from the pictures here, you might be mistaken or not mistaken to say, hey, that's uh, that's a second gen, Aaron, wrong picture. Because they basically retain everything that was good about the second gen and tweak some areas that they thought were right to make it the third one and call it a day. I know I'm simplifying the whole process, but that's really basically it. So there's been some sample units already sent out to some review sites. And so far, the feedback has been positive. Same sound quality that they're, they're, they're was amazing on the second one. Uh, the form factor, nice and small, really nice and compact. that sits really well in the ear. They've improved the silicone material for the wing tips as well as the ear tip so it can fits more ear types and you know, allows you to wear it long for longer periods of time. They tweak the battery capacity a little bit to help compensate for the always listening uh, Google commands. And the biggest change though is the asking price. So with the second gen, if you remember, or some of you don't remember, but I'm gonna say it anyway, they were asking for $180. That turned a lot of people off, including this one. This, this generation though, $99. Think about that, that's a huge jump. Well done Google for doing that. That makes it a whole lot more competitive with other brands of around the same price range, uh, like Soundcore, Soundpeats, Tautronics and such, and even Samsung Buds Pro and such that go on discount, uh, Buds Live that have gone on discount. So that makes it a whole lot more competitive. And I like Google, Google too, because they have a really fun colors to go along with it. So. I hope they fix some of the problems that some of the reviewers have found though with the production units, like the excessive outside noise that gets into the venting ports. That was a problem in the second gen as well, but it still retained the second one. And also the other ones, they removed for some reason the uh, volume, the gesture, sliding gesture for volume. I hope they bring that back as well. So I'm looking forward to what they do with the proper unit. I mean the production unit. Oh, yeah. The next thing I want to talk about is the whole Google Photos storage quota thing that ended on May 31st and went into full effect in a different forum on June 1st. And I wanted to know from you guys, comment down below. Yeah, let me know what have you been doing since then? Uh, if you, especially if you're a non-Pixel, current Pixel owner, have you stayed with Google? Have you started paying for their services? Have you gone on to like Amazon Photos or Apple, Apple Photos? Or have you gone to other things? Like for myself, I, I still pay a little bit like $1.99 for the because I'm cheap the hundred dollar a hundred gigabyte uh, service and I also built a NAS a, a network accessible storage system for myself to uh, store all my files full full quality uh, six gigs and also be accessible online wherever I'm going and I also have the OG uh, pixel still and if you didn't know the OG pixel is grandfathered into a whole program for unlimited highest quality backup so if you're able to get one of those get your hands on one of those I think they're running 150 bucks or less right now um, if you can get your hands on one of those, just pair that, create a folder uh, in your current uh, phone and just pair that with that phone uh, with the original Pixel and use that to back up all your pictures and your videos and you get maximum quality. Um, so let me know down below what you're doing with that. Now, I want to talk about the upcoming DJI Mini 3, if you don't mind. We all know it's coming, but we just don't know when it's going to be launched. But if you go by, say, the Mini 2's launch date in November 2020, and if you go by the one-year cycle, it should come out around the same time, the Mini 3, sometime around Christmas. Or is it? Because there's been strong rumors that because uh, there's been a lot of competitors out there that DJI is getting nervous. They want to push up the Mini 3's launch to somewhere around August, September. Uh, because a few months ago we had, or a couple months ago, we had the Xiaomi Mini, uh, Fimi X8 Mini that just trounced the uh, Mini 2 in a couple of ways, like auto track and for less lesser price. But Hapsan is coming out, we're not sure when, next month or in a month after that. Uh, they're coming out with what they call the Xeno Mini Pro, which is going to be awesome. It has tri-directional object avoidance, which means you can sense things front and back and bottom as well, and 40 minutes of flight time. That trumps every, anything that DJI has right now, unless the Mini 3 can really compete with that. So I'm kind of curious how the Mini 3 is going to 
respond to all those things because DJI is getting nervous. And Hapsan, I, I'll tell you what, the price for the Fly More version, they have three batteries and blades, extra blades and the carry case and all that, is the same price as the Mini 2. So Mini 2's Fly More kit. So yeah, DJI better step it up and really compete as far as, in terms of price as well. So I'm kind of excited about that. Well, that's all I got for this installment, guys. And please join me on Friday when we'll do the Amazon Echo Buds Gen 2 review. And speaking of reviews too, if you've noticed this watch on my wrist for the past couple of videos, you might have seen this being flashed in front of the screen. It's hard to miss it with this color. This is the Coros Space 2. And I'll be launching a video in about a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, this is one amazing watch. I've never heard of this brand. You probably haven't heard of it too. But the company sent me this unit and said, hey, test this out. And I can say bar none, this is the best smartwatch I put on my wrist in a long, long time. This thing is bloody amazing. We'll check it out in a few weeks. So look out for that one. In the meantime, remember to subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell notification to show your support. And also thumbs up if you like this video and comment nicely down below. And remember to do something kind and loving for somebody. This next few days, do something kind for a stranger or something because the world needs it more more than ever and it starts with you peace out guys i love y'all very much